Hello everybody and welcome to this pretty fun tutorial in which I'm going to show you how we can create such an interactive wall detail in Shaper 3D. I said interactive because everything is set up in a way so we can completely change our design just with a set of a few mouse clicks. Okay, and with all that said, let's do it. So here we are in our standard starter file. We go to front view, snapping is on, we are in inches. Let's create a sketch. We very quickly block out a basic design. There we are, escape, double click everything, horizontal, vertical, make these two equal. So symmetry is going to be easier. Then this will be 66 inches and this will be 95 inches. There we are, beautiful. We go to 3D view, select the sketch profile and extrude this out five inches. That's our wall. Cool, okay, we can go to a side view. Then we go to sketch and you see now this is cutting through the body. We have our snapping elements and there I start drawing a vertical line, our line at the bottom and a line on top. And the top and the bottom line should be horizontally vertically constrained. Then let's go to the spline control. There we click, click, click and terminate this at the bottom and press escape and escape. Very good. So we can sculpt actually the shape of this curve this way. Now well, let's say like that. Beautiful. Cool. Okay. Now if we go to the site and create a sketch, there we are. We basically start at the top, draw down, go over, go back and go back and escape. And then actually this line I will make, actually all lines I will make horizontal vertical. And here, this one, I will make three inches. Beautiful. Click escape. Then I go to the opposite side, go to here, click sketch. Very good. And now, I can draw here a line and then I will, because I'm lazy, I'm not lazy, I'm just smart. I will click on project command, make sure this is linked sketch. And into the sketch, I simply project what I have drawn there before and click done there. Very good. So now we can go ahead and say one, two and three and do a nice, beautiful loft. There we are, beautiful. Now, based on um, where, for example, this top point is, you can see how we are creating a nice arc. And then also here, based on how this curve is shaped, we can push this out a little bit. Let's say like this, beautiful. So we go to the front view um, and then we go to sketch, there we are. And I am going to draw a new rectangle. This rectangle should be at the bottom. There we are. Um, how long is this? That is 66, okay. Then this we make two inches. This is all locked, very good two inches, and then we extrude this one out. It should only be, or only needs to be extruded so it passes through this curved part. Very good. So now this is 66, which is an even number. This is two inches, it's another even number. And now we create a pattern. I would like to have a spacing of four, so um, a gap of two inches, let's say 16. No, it's not enough. Let's go with 18. Okay, 
technically speaking, we only need 17 because the 18th R is actually right outside. Very good. Not because 66 divided by two, you can have always two steps in between. You have one piece, you don't have a piece, you have a piece, you don't have a piece. Okay, very good. Now, it makes sense to start naming things. So this is actually our wall. Uh, let's hide this one. And then this is our detail. And then I select the linear pattern and then I select subtract. So from that detail, we or lofted body, we subtract our linear pattern. Click done. There we are. <laughs> Look at that. That's pretty cool. Uh, all this, honestly, we just push back into this folder because this makes things a lot easier to read. So if this is all what you need, well, that's then we can be done. Again, also here, I only have three profiles. The more profiles you have in between, the more you can create different organic shapes. I would like to know, let's assume we talk to a client, cut in actually an opening to put down some merchandise. So I'll go to a side view, go to rectangle and draw here a rectangle. Let's say like this, very good. And then this one, I extrude out, um, let's say this extrudes out to this face. Very good. So I'm measuring from the center to there. And hey, do this please both sides. Thank you. This block, by the way, should also cut through everything. You see, I hit the wall. And then I say, instead of new body, subtract, and now I need to add it or add the parts that should cut. Add it and select all this and done. Wow, look, there it cut automatically. The sketch, no, the sketch, not the sketch is hidden. So when I go and edit the sketch, I then can push basically this cut further in or even completely through there. When we select this lower edge, we can even bring this further down or push this down. Cool. Okay. Now the client says, hey, this looks really great, but we have gaps here. Merchandise will fall down. I would like to have a wooden board on top that, however, meets also these beautifully carved edges. How can we do this very easily? And that's very easy. We go a little bit back in time. Here's the loft, there's that sketch. This is here where we started the pattern. So right click, uh, insert breakpoint, we go to there. Um, there is actually the sketch for the shelf opening. So that one I drag to there because now before the rest comes, I can see this. And we go add construction plane uh, there, this one along this uh, along this edge with this reference plane. I would like to rotate a construction plane 90 degrees. So with this construction plane, I can actually split this body. Flop. There we are. This one we hide. And now I have here a detail which I can extrude up. Let's say new body 1.5 inches. Thank you. Then I show actually this part again. And then these two, which I split, I fuse back together with the union command. Okay, now well, this one can go. There, look at that. Um, I would like this one to be split by this. There we are. And I would like this one to be split by this face. There we are. And then I can select these two fragments and delete them. Cool. No, because everything is parametric. Now again, this is the beauty of it. 
if I select this line, I am changing where I'm cutting open later, but I'm also changing where this construction plane is, where I split the part, where I extruded the shelf, and something as complicated like this is then only a matter of moving the mouse a little bit up and down. Let's make this look a little bit nicer. Let's throw in some materials. There we are. This one we can make white. And then actually, hold on, this one let's make white. And this wall let's make orange. And then when we also rotate the, the light here, now there you can see the drop shadow we could simulate with this design. Okay, beautiful. That's it. That is how easy it is to create such a really complex looking wall detail with very simple modeling steps and make it interactive. Thanks to the history.